Today you're gonna see how I got from here to here. I can't say that I was like this person or this one or that one, but I didn't have much extra weight. So losing 9 pounds of fat was a big deal for me. Almost a third of my body fat. And it was quite an effort to lose that fat and at the same time gain 7 pounds of muscle. I added about 10 extra pounds in the first half of 2022. And I found that carrying an extra 10 pounds while I kept playing soccer and running for 15 miles a week was a bad idea. I injured my ankles and left knee and had to stop doing both. Plus, those extra 10 pounds were quite embarrassing, especially for a person who promotes a healthy lifestyle. So, for several months I wanted to lose that extra weight, but I didn't have the time or maybe the willpower to do it. Finally, at the end of December, I decided to take action. My challenge was that I had never lost weight in the proper programmatic way. Despite maintaining a healthy lifestyle for years, my typical weight loss approach was quite simple – running and playing soccer a couple more times a week and skipping a meal here and there. And it worked really well for me in the past. But this time it was not an option. My ankles and left knee were injured, so running, playing soccer or even cycling was out of the question. And I really wanted to do this right – by losing fat, but preserving muscles. So I had to come up with a plan to lose weight without the luxury of burning 4000 calories a day through my favorite cardio activities. Since it all boils down to calorie balance, I simply had to burn more calories than I consumed. Since my weight had been more or less stable for a few months before, my plan was to cut out desserts, alcohol and unnecessary snacks, and increase workouts, whatever I could do in the gym, from 3 to 4 sessions a week to 5 to 6. My plan was to have food twice daily, since I practice intermittent fasting. For breakfast, I had my favorite tomato cucumber salad along with fish, chicken, meat, cheese or nuts. And dinner usually included a soup or salad and whatever my wife Daria cooked that day. Regarding my physical activities, since I couldn't run or cycle, I swam three times a week instead. Although I'm not a big fan of swimming, probably because I swam too much in my childhood, this time I had no other choice. And I did strength exercises for my upper body, lower body and core the other three days. It was critical to preserve my muscles. I thought it was a solid plan to cut those extra pounds of fat. In the first week things went well, I lost 3 pounds. Honestly, I expected this because having less food made my digestive tract lighter and reduced water retention in the body. I didn't really burn my body fat, but it was still something to celebrate. By the way, since my weight was going up and down during the day, I used my morning weight as the reference point. After the first week, I stopped getting lighter. Even though I felt better, the feeling was only subjective. I lost fat, but I gained muscles, so my weight stayed steady. That's how I explained the situation to myself. I am an optimist and I always want to think about the best outcome. But I didn't have any reliable data to confirm this. My weight scale could measure my body fat percentage, but it wasn't very accurate, fluctuating from 12 to 15% within a single day. Come on, man. So I decided to get a DEXA scan like I did in 2018 to get accurate data on my body composition. It revealed that my body fat was 30.8 pounds or 18.4%. I felt a bit down when comparing these numbers with those from 5 years ago. I gained 3.1 pounds, which is ok ok -ish, but I lost 4.4 pounds of muscle and gained 7.5 pounds of fat. That's a bit rough. By the way, my face and body didn't change much visually over the last 5 years. Which goes to show that visual comparison over 5 years is not a reliable measure. Who would have guessed? Anyway, armed with solid data, I decided to do DEXA scans every month to track my fat loss progress. I knew it would be an expensive at like $40 per scan, but I thought it would be a good investment. A couple more weeks passed by with slow progress, so I decided to closely examine my diet and choose to diligently count every single calorie I consumed. I knew it would be time consuming and no fun, but it was the only way to get additional insights into my diet habits. I used an application called Lose It. It's a good app, although it constantly wanted me to upgrade to a paid version. I really didn't want to do that. But I finally did, after a couple weeks wasting my time on watching their commercials. The first several days of tracking were eye-opening. I learned that my calorie intake was pretty much the same as the calories I burned – around 2700 calories a day. 
My big brain analysis led me to two areas for improvement. First, I needed to cut down on the amount of nuts in my diet. I love nuts, but they pack a lot of calories. Just 100 grams of nuts equals 700 calories, almost a third of my daily calorie budget. Giving up on nuts was quite a challenge for me, but it was a move in the right direction. And the second area was to minimize overeating during dinners with my friends and cut out chocolate unless I needed energy for an important work meeting. From then on, I had to weigh and record practically all of my food and be even more diligent in sticking to my no sweets, no snacks, no big dinners diet. Ok, I made some adjustment to my diet and aimed for about 600 calorie deficit, consuming 2400 calories and burning 3000 calories in a day. Now I knew I was on the right track. There were no real results yet, but I was confident that it was just a matter of time before I'd see a positive change. A math lesson, a 600 calorie daily deficit means a person could lose about 67 grams or 0.15 pounds of fat daily, adding up to 1 pound a week. A nice weekly weight drop? Pretty quickly I faced another problem – food cravings. It's not fun to crave food almost all the time. These cravings pose a significant risk to my fat loss plan. Here I had to incorporate a few small tricks into my diet that made a huge difference. Drinking more liquids like water and tea, further reducing my food plates, chewing slowly and sucking on sugar-free cup drops in the evening. All these tricks helped me reduce my food cravings. And probably one of the funniest things I did was adjust my daily calorie intake target from 2400 to 2200 in Lucid, hoping it would help cut back. Surprisingly, it worked like magic. Whenever I noticed I was nearing or surpassing my daily calorie goal, my appetite mysteriously vanished. Oh, the wonders of human brain! A couple more weeks went by. I saw some progress, but it was slow, like a 0.2 pounds of weight loss per week. And my mood was not that great. I understood that a calorie deficit could negatively affect mood, but knowing it and experiencing it are two different things. The good news is that my face skin cleared up nicely and my hair became really soft. I did some big brain research again and identified two reasons for hitting that plateau. First, being in a calorie deficit for a while slowed down my metabolism, meaning I simply needed fewer calories daily. Second, from time to time I still exceeded my daily calorie budget, especially over the weekends when we met our friends for a good dinner. I'm a very social person. It's worth mentioning that by that time I had completely adapted to my new lifestyle – smaller portion sizes, counting calories, controlling my food intake at dinners with my friends, working out almost every day doing the same workout routine every week, and feeling a bit tired all the time. All of that became my new normal. So my progress was slow, but I had to keep moving forward. And here I didn't have a good solution, other than to maintain a calorie deficit, work out regularly, stay calm and carry on. Then I did the second DEXA scan, and for the first time I had a chance to observe changes in my fat and muscle mass. Even though my weight didn't change much, my body fat went down by 2.9 pounds and my muscle mass increased by 2.3 pounds. It definitely lifted my spirits. Tracking my calorie intake for a month was enough to get a strong feel of the calorie value of each food and plate. The process of weighing my food and logging calories into the app became repetitive, with no real additional value. So I stopped doing it. I came back to lose it a couple more times late in the year, but it was mostly just for calibration purposes and to cancel my paid subscription. By the way, after eating healthy for two months, my digestion improved a lot. No more bloating or constipation. Everything works smoothly and fast now. And my tongue became clean and rosy. Then I had a work trip to India and met a stop in Dubai. I put in my best effort to control my calorie intake and stay active during the trip. 20 hours on the plane just to get to Bangalore and my busy schedule made it challenging, but I gave it my best shot. My April Dexa scan revealed that my weight remained nearly the same, but I lost an additional 1.7 pounds of fat and gained another 2.3 pounds of lean tissue. Another morale boost for me. I knew I was on the right track. Even though doing the same workout routine in the gym every week was really boring, I had no choice. The results were speaking for themselves. 
Another trip, this time it was a personal one. My family visited Australia and Fiji. At that time, my wife Dari was pregnant with our third child, Alex. So we wanted to go somewhere before being confined at home with a newborn and our two hyperactive kids, Max and Lisa. I must admit, personal trips, especially with the family, don't really support a weight loss journey. Plus, the food in Australia was just too delicious. Another DEXA scan showed that I gained 0.6 pounds of fat and lost 2.6 pounds of muscle. Not surprising at all, as I didn't do any strength training during my travel. After 4 months of my weight loss journey, one big thing happened. Finally, finally, the pain in my ankles and left knee decreased, and I could resume cycling and later running. It was a huge step toward getting my life back to normal. And cycling and running helped me increase my calorie expansion to about 3200 calories a day and speed up my metabolism. That was a big deal. My DEXA scan in June revealed a pleasing 1 pound drop in fat and a 1.3 pound gain in muscle, which was great to see. After 5 months, I managed to lose 5 pounds of body fat. My July DEXA scan showed a 0.2 pound gain in fat and a 3.5 pound decline in lean tissue. It was a bit depressing, and I don't know how exactly I lost muscle mass. I was probably dehydrated at the test. As you might know, DEXA scans are super accurate in measuring fat, but have some challenges in measuring muscle mass. And we were just a week away from Darius' due date. At that point, my focus shifted from my weight loss journey to bringing ice cream and pickles to Daria in the middle of the night. On July 6, our third child, Alex, was born, and the entire month of July became hectic for me. Despite the busyness, I tried my best to eat healthy and work out regularly. Actually, I didn't really have much time to eat, since I was too busy changing Alex's diapers. My August DEXA scan readings were quite impressive. A 1.3 pound fat loss, which made perfect sense for me, and a surprising 4.7 pound muscle gain. I had no clue how I gained muscle mass, but I guess it was a correction from my previous test. Or maybe my hard work in the gym paid off. And then at the end of August we moved to a new place. Yeah, you know that moving to a new place is basically as hard as building a new house. And sticking to my weight loss plan was not a priority at the time. From now on I just had to stick to my routine, maintain my calorie deficit and work out regularly, day after day and week after week. With no more trips, babies or moving houses planned at least till Christmas, I was determined to stay on track and finish my 2023 fat loss journey strong. And I began to loosen up my strict diet to make my lifestyle more sustainable. So I could enjoy some chocolate here and there and have a good dinner with my friends. Essentially, by then I built good habits that helped me progress on my fat loss journey. After 4 more months in December, I had my final DEXA scan of the year. 21.7 pounds of fat and a record-breaking 137 pounds of muscle mass. My body fat percentage was 13.1%, lower than it was 5 years ago. Ole, ole! I did it. It felt incredible. 9 pounds of fat were gone and my muscle mass had increased by 7 pounds. No more pain in my ankles or knee. And I was back on the soccer field scoring goals. Alright, I just want to say a few quick things. First things first, I did it. Oh my god! Wow! It took me some time, basically the entire year, but I did it. Honestly, with two kids, a pregnant wife, a new child, a demanding job, business and personal travel, and moving houses, I didn't believe I could do that. But I did. Jokes aside, I actually do have a couple of things I want to say. If you want to lose weight, don't compare yourself to anyone else. Just because some people shed pounds quickly doesn't mean you should too. Everybody's bodies are different, and you need to work at your own pace. What works for others may not always work for you. Don't push yourself too hard to lose weight quickly. Do it in a sustainable way is more critical. Originally, my plan was to lose 10 pounds of body fat in 8 weeks, and my calculations showed that an 800 calorie daily deficit could get me there. However, life made its own corrections, and my primary focus shifted from achieving quick results to establishing a sustainable approach. Accurate data is essential for making the right adjustments. Relying on personal and subjective feelings is not reliable. 
Reliant, not reliable. Sounds funny. Anyway, if you have an opportunity, track your fat loss journey with DEXA scans and count your calorie intake at least for several days. The ultimate goal is to build a healthy daily routine that becomes your default behavior. And building a great daily routine requires time and a lot, a lot of fine-tuning of your diet, workout schedule and sleep habits. I'll keep following my calorie deficit diet and workout plan. And I hope one day I'll get to 0% body fat. Just kidding, it's impossible. We need at least 4% body fat to survive. So I target 9-10% body fat like elite soccer players have. That's my journey and my life. I really enjoy it and beyond shedding weight and feeling physically great, it also boosted my morale. I hope my experience can help you lose weight, if you have any, and stay fit. And together we'll fight the global obesity pandemic. Ok, that's it. It was a lot of fun making this video. If you enjoyed it, leave me a like and a comment, share your experience and your tricks of losing fat.